So if the shift is from doing the programming to teaching a machine what to program, I would argue that we still need to understand how to program to do that. Why? Well, I mean, maybe we need to verify if it will work as intended with an existing program, or we need to be able to modify it. If we are going to create apps that do very specific things for specific people, or even for a broad range of people, we need to be able to customize it for those different audiences or users, etc. So yeah, you might not be doing the majority of the programming, which sounds great, but you're still gonna adjust some things. I doubt people are just gonna go with the default answer that is given to you. Maybe again, that will be done through some kind of a dialogue with the AI to be able to customize things, or you might go into the code and change the parameters around a bit. But perhaps a better argument is that teachers aren't just spoon feeding examples to students that they don't understand. If they were, how would they be able to assess whether or not a student actually understands the content? So if you're engaging in some kind of a large project where you are, I don't know, like coding a video game or something, and you're working on the physics engine for it, you might say, hey, AI, I'd like you to be able to code making it so that I can throw something in the game. We've already got code for movement, we've already got code for jumping, but I wanna make it so that when I throw something, it's not just gravity that affects it, but it also can hit an object and bounce off of it. So if we have a wall and you throw a rock at the wall, it's going to hit the wall and then continue to fall, but bounce backward. If I told the AI that, hey, I'd like to be able to add in a physics component for something being thrown, it might spit out code that says, hey, this object is going to move at 9.8 meters per second, and then some kind of a code that'll make it so it'll detect and bounce off of a wall or some kind of an object while it continues to move, etc. But you're gonna need to be able to figure out whether or not it's actually going to work within your platform. For example, how is it going to interact with other sprites? Like instead of a wall, what if you throw it and it hits an enemy in the game? How is the enemy going to respond to it? Is it going to bounce off of them? Will it do damage to them? What about if you throw it at a friendly character? Are they gonna get upset at you? Is it gonna change your relationship option with them? Are they gonna pick it up and throw it back at you? All of these little conditions need to be programmed into what it is that you are creating. So if you're just asking AI for the general physics engine or the algorithm that's gonna be used to code the object that's being thrown, great. But now you have to make it work. It's kind of like when you go into Stack Overflow and you're trying to find like a solution to something, you might find a general idea, but you're gonna have to adjust the parameters. You're gonna have to make it fit like within what you are actually writing. If you just copy and paste the answer and put it into your code, odds are it's not gonna work. And my guess is for quite some time, it's gonna be the same thing with generative AI until it gets to the point where AI can develop the entire platform, the entire project start to finish and analyze all of the code and make the adjustments all at once. You're still gonna need to know how to program or at least evaluate a program in order to make it work, in my opinion. Eventually, I'm sure we'll get to a point where it's just as good as the author describes, and all we have to do is come up with ideas. Until then, we're gonna need to know something.